Wallaby great Totai Kefu built a career around being as tough as they come, but it's nothing compared to the strength of his wife, Rachel. Six months on from a violent home invasion, Rachel is finally able to talk about that terrifying night and how laughter is helping her and the family on their road to recovery. You'd struggle to find a fuller house than the Kefus in suburban Brisbane. There's rarely a quiet moment. <laughs> and it's still hard to believe that in August last year, this home that has for so long brought them together became the scene of unthinkable trauma. Does the house feel different for you now? Um, not now. Rach wanted to get rid of the house. Um, I was but ready to sell it. <laughs> she was ready to sell it, but... After a couple of days of convincing her, um, you know, we got her back in. Do you, f you feel safe here now, right? Yeah, uh, the house is fine. Uh, uh, being back here doesn't worry me. This is our house, so, you know, you got all the memories in it, everything. So I'm glad Toto forced me to come back <laughs> um, because, yeah, we need to be here, um, to, I think, to get through it. I'm still up at night. Um, it's, it's definitely changed, life's definitely changed, but yeah, I'm glad we, we've come back to the house, yeah. Totai, Rachel and two of their children suffered shocking injuries when four teenagers allegedly broke into their home in the dead of night, armed with an axe and a machete. Kefu forced to defend his family in an altercation that left him with life-threatening injuries. While initial reports suggested Todai was clinging to life, it was in fact Rachel who suffered the worst injuries. And even though the boys were being operated on at that time, he said, yours is long term. Wow. Only now is she able to open up about that frightening night and just how close she came to losing an arm. A lot of things could have happened and gone wrong, but um, yeah, I've got an arm and it's, I've got feeling in it. After six months of rehabilitation, the former water polo player is showing remarkable signs of improvement. It's a, a dull ache kind of pain and a heavy pain. Um, so you know it's there. You're constantly feeling it. And then when I go to do certain things, like open a jar, I can't do things. So there's frustration as well at times when you just can't physically do things. So I've got a little bit of movement, a lot more movement than I had. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's obviously not the same, but it's, um, yeah, it's getting better and there's improvement. So another six months of intense therapy and mm. hopefully we'll get it back. Does it hurt the physical all? scars are plain to see, but the emotional toll is also clear. We're not the, definitely not the same, um, but, you know, we, we, need to, we need to find a way to move on, uh, live with it. Um, and put it behind us. I think we've done that really well. Like, we discuss it. It's not something that's not talked about. Mm. Most of the time, it's in, it, we have a good laugh about it, you know. We could have, should have done this, should have done that. So I think that helps a lot. People will find it interesting, I think, to know that you find ways to laugh about what happened that night. You know, we, we always find the funny side in things. <laughs> Um, no matter what situation we're in, you know, we always wake up with a smile on our face. And a big part of our life is, is enjoyment and having a good laugh. So I think, I think that has really helped this family move on. Todd, I said that he felt sorry for the kids after the attack. Do you share that sympathy? How do you feel about them? I go through moments, I have times I feel sorry for them and I, I wonder why, that, like why they did what they did and I would like to know reasons, like I need sometimes answers, but then I have also other times where I'm angry. And have your feelings changed at all about the kids and No, life? not at all, like there are, I think with kids, you know, they're kids, I think they're a product of the environment. Um, you know, what 14, 15 year old kids should be out that, at that time of night, where are their parents? So in saying that, you know, you know, the next person that breaks in, you know, I probably won't take it that easily, but... I don't think anyone's ever breaking into no, this house again. No, I don't think so either, I but... Not. No. 
Totai had a reputation as a hard hitter for the Wallabies, but his heart is as big as the man himself, and now he's tackling an issue that's very dear to him. It's just a big clean-up operation at the moment, so just cleaning streets, clearing away debris. In the wake of the devastating Tongan volcano disaster, he's assembled an invitational team to take on the vintage Reds and raise money for the relief effort. How are they looking? Are the boys fit and ready? Are they yeah, we, pumped we, up? We trained uh, last Saturday and they looked as I expected they would look. Um, they needed the run. <laughs> we went along to size them up and let's just say they're putting their bodies on the line. How are you feeling about your prospects on Saturday after seeing them do those moves? Not very good. <laughs> um, no, but Such it, a confident yeah. coach. <laughs> um, oh, look, as long as they put on a bit of a, um, uh, a good show and a bit of a sure. display, that's all that matters. You know? It's all about um, raising funds and, and, and getting donations in. One, two, three, brothers! Among the players, brothers Stevie and Muffy Kefu. How is the dynamic for you as players with brother Todd I as the coach? Well, he got picked just because he's his brother. <laughs> I got picked because I'm still young, you know. And, fit. and there's champion wallaby George Smith. Did Todd I put the call out to you to come and yeah. play? Yeah, <laughs> well, when the chief says you got to play, you got to play, so... You may also remember Todd I's hero neighbour, Ben Cannon, who came to the family's rescue. Well, he's making himself useful once again. Ben, this is a big responsibility. Are you up to it? It is the, uh, the H2O job. So, yeah, assistant manager, I call it, but affectionately known as the water boy. Stay verbal, stay verbal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever happens, win or lose, the pride of the Pacific Islands will be on full and passionate display as these boys rally for the people of Tonga. And I reckon they'll go all right too. You can watch the rugby on stand tomorrow and to donate to the Tongan Relief, head to our website.